Okay, so this one says it's like a Python any function. I don't know Python. Do you, do you know this in Python? Um, is it the same thing as sum in JavaScript? Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe that's a better way to put it. Yeah, um, any sum. I guess which one does Ramda use? I don't know. I think it's all pass. That's a very random Ramda name for that. Uh, so a type takes an array and returns true if any element in the array is true. And if the array is empty, it returns false. So let's look at the examples. They'll probably be just as clear. So if we have an array that has uh, all, I don't know, all sorts of things in it here, we're going to test for, um, where does the array end? Any of, oh, sorry, it's saying if, yeah, it doesn't end because it's just one argument. Oops. So it's looking for any of the values and we're seeing if they're, if they're true. So there's no predicate. Okay. Where would you start on something like this? With the generic constraint? Okay, awesome. Um, and then... I guess maybe make it recursive, yep. or I can say... Yeah, I think it's going to have to be recursive. Spends... Um, mm -hmm. Her head... Yep. Her tail. Great so far. And for that one, um, head extends true. Very close. So let's let's fill it in. There's like a there's like a bit of a trick. Um, so here, so like what would this? This would be false. Um, this would be, so let's, let's think of, uh, let's do it this way. So it's, it's a little difficult to define all truthy values, but I'm going to show you a, uh, I'm, we're, we'll make a type here. That's a union called falsy. And, uh, oh, well, it's not whether it's false or true. It's just, it's, we're dealing with falsy and truthy. Right. Exactly. Um, right. Okay. So we have to make a helper type, um, to solve, well, anyway, to solve it this way. So I'll give you some of them. Um, there's like zero, um, empty string. What else? False. Yep. Um, um, it would be null and undefined, I think. Oh, yeah, null and undefined. Um, and then they also said if it's an empty array, so... I guess we'll pass we'll, we'll pass empty array because really? because in JavaScript an empty array is truthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for the purposes of this one, the API is such that um, yeah let's let's go with that for now. Uh, everything so everything passes except this one. So I think the reason is because of that empty object. So we have to target the empty object somehow. The way that you target the empty object is to, I'll just start at the front here. You you say uh, record string never. So thinking about it sort of three-dimensionally, what record string never is saying is like an object type, uh, object in the sense that like uh, POJO, like plain JavaScript object, not object like, you know, functions or objects and stuff like that. Um, so Essentially a map. Yeah, it's like, it? a, like a yeah, dictionary or something. And the keys are strings, but the values are never, meaning it doesn't have any values. It can't have any values. So it's kind of like, uh, it's the same, I think it would be syntactically equivalent in this case to saying like key string never. Yeah, it's the same. Um, so that's kind of one thing that's hard to remember is the, the fact that like JavaScript will collapse ne the never type on a lot of things. Like mm -hmm. you're saying like, all right, the type is never and then JavaScript would be like, all right, well then I'm just going to like completely strip it out and just consider that it doesn't exist. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard uh, never to Never can be, uh, there's a word for that. I don't know, like consuming. Um, but yeah, basically it's saying this type here has a, and can have any number of key, string keyed members, including zero number of members, and that any string keyed members that it does have must be of type never. But since there's no value that's th the type never, it means that a value of this type that's selected here on the screen must have exactly zero string keyed members, which is the thing we're trying to select for. 
Um, I looked online for some other solutions for this. This one is kind of an interesting, so this one here uh, is pretty fascinating. So this is saying, give me a function. Um, it, it also does this thing. We haven't seen this yet, you and I, uh, Aaron, but there's like a, a trick that sometimes people use where they'll make a second generic that stores a value. So it's like, you can use it like temp storage for generics. It's not actually passed, like all of these just pass one argument. But you, you can pass it though, isn't that like defaulting it? You can, yeah, you sure can pass it. It's just that it's defaulted. It's actually like one of the reasons I don't like doing stuff like this is because it gets a little tricky, um, you know, otherwise. But I think it, but I think it, it I, I don't like that because it, it makes consumption confusing because it makes me think, oh, there's sometimes mm -hmm. another argument. Yeah, totally. Another, another I, generic that I need to I pass. I completely here. agree. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know whether somebody is using this to, just to like hack something or whether you're supposed to ever actually pass it. In this case, you should never pass this argument, but it's storing a value of T, a single value of T up there as I. And then it's saying uh, the function, or I'm sorry, it's not a function. Uh, why did I say that? Because I see these parentheses. So it's saying this thing here is, does I extend falsy? If so, return false, otherwise return true. So, okay. And if that extends false, then return false, otherwise return true. I mean, it's pretty convoluted, but the, the key part is it's it, it's doing a, distribu a distribution on the values of T up here in like one by one, and then going through in that way. So this T number thing gets a, I think we could probably, would this work all the same? Let's check out, let's do that and then make this number zero. Yeah, so that works the same. I would say this solution is a superior one written this way instead of storing T number up there, but T number creates a union of all of the values of T. So do any of the values of T extend falsy? Um, if they're false, return false. If they're if 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 not, return false. If so, return true. So, and then yeah. Oh, same. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, I should have read ahead. This this is a similar way of actually equivalent equivalent way really of doing the same thing. You can just skip all of this this nesting and just do it this way. Maybe this is a better approach in a way than what we came up with, but they're just different sort of different, cut from different cloth, I think, different ways of looking at it. This one uses inferencing and extension, and this one just grabs all the values, turns them into a union, and then sees if any of them extend. What do you think? No thoughts, really. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, here we go. Let's do the next one. 